In the late 1850s, the River Thames had become so clogged with not only human waste, but, but, but waste from industry, um, animal carcasses, you name it. It was basically a rubbish tip. The river was being used to dump all the rubbish from London. Um, the flushing toilet had come along, which meant more stuff was going through the sewers than ever been designed for. And so London was basically suffocating. It was uh, it was dying from cholera and typhoid, and the stink was out, out, um, unbelievable. The river became ever increasingly filthier and filthier and filthier until the stench became too great. And in, in, in 1858, what was called the Great Stink was a summer where it was overbearing and even the MPs in the Houses of Parliament could stand it no longer. So something had to be done and, uh, and that project was overseen by, by Sir Joseph Baseljet. His scheme was devised after a competition in the newspaper, I think it was a Times newspaper, put out a competition for people to come up with ideas for eradicating the sewage from London. Um, all sorts of grand ideas of like railways that would take it out at night and all sorts of tunnel systems, none of which were ideal, but from that, Joseph Bazalgette picked the bones out of it and came up with a design for a system that would work. Joseph Bazalgette's scheme began in 1859 and he built 82 miles of intercepting sewers across the south and the north of London, deep underground. And those 82 miles of sewers on the south side all came down to Crossness, here at Crossness, which was 12 miles downstream from what was then Victorian London, much smaller. Now at this point, it's about 30 foot below ground. So these beam engines operate huge pumps which draw the sewage up. They then pumped it into a covered reservoir which would hold a maximum of about 25 million gallons. And when the tide turned, released the sewage from the reservoir and that flowed out on that ebbing tide and didn't then flow back when the tide turns. And so he was implementing the entire sewage system we use now. And also it was a system that was copied worldwide. So he led directly to the saving of countless lives across the world. The design of all this incredibly elaborate uh, ironwork is Charles Driver, who was known for his manufacturing design of uh, for cast iron. I mean, the screens, for example, they're, they're made in one piece, which is quite extraordinary. The, the scale of them, the intricacy, they're just works of art and these huge functioning machines, which are basically pumping raw sewage. Yet it's so glorious and so beautifully made. And, and I think probably that the idea was that you, this was an opportunity to show off for the Metropolitan Board of Works to really show off and to say, look what we've achieved with this scheme. The reason the pumping station was ultimately abandoned was technology was moving on. And so the idea of lighting a boiler, adding coal, warming an engine for two or three hours before you can start it was out of favour. Now you just press the button and you can start pumping. So it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's a business. It's not about nostalgia, unfortunately. <laughs> I'll always still be here manning these engines. Uh, nostalgia is wonderful, but nostalgia doesn't put money in the shareholders' pockets. Uh, the last time that one of these steam engines uh, was used was in the floods in 1953. And after that it was left to dereliction. And in the early 1980s, um, 
some of our volunteers found, found the site and uh, began restoring it, building it, I like to think, for the second time. And uh, 30 years later, to 30 years of, of dedication on their part, we have this magnificent cathedral on the marshes. It'd be nice to think in 150 years' time there'd be people coming to visit this site and appreciating the work of Basiljet and the work of the Trust. One half hopefully will be completely restored. That is the ultimate aim. The other half we will conserve, we will keep it in its decayed state but stop it getting any worse. And that will be able to show people what has been achieved, where we started and where we are, and also where Basiljet started and where we are. You know, the whole lot will come together. The skills involved in terms of the construction, the, the brickwork, the cast iron work, the sheer ingenuity of the, of the scheme itself, the engines by James Watt. It's a huge team of highly skilled people that came together to make this happen. And when in making this happen, they enabled London to to grow because London was poisoning itself with its own sewage. So this scheme enabled the metropolis to expand.